In this video, we will see about nonlinear SVM. So, in case of nonlinear SVM, the data points are not linearly separable in the original feature space. That is nothing but whatever dimension I am giving you. With that dimension, you cannot draw a straight line connecting the different data points of different classes. So, in that case, since we cannot differentiate in the original feature space, we are going to apply some transformations to this data and we will be mapping the data from the original feature space to the higher dimensional feature space. This is the thing we are going to do in nonlinear SVM. Convert the data from original feature space into higher dimensional feature space. The meaning is, if I have a 2D feature space, if I'm not able to differentiate the points by a straight line, I'll be converting them into 3D feature, feature space. If it is 3D already, I'll be converting into four dimension and so on. So you are going to convert from lower dimension to higher dimension. In that dimension, sometimes you may be able to separate. It is not sure that you can always separate in the higher dimension plane. For example, when I'm converting from two dimension to three dimension, if I'm not able to separate in the three, three dimension also, I have to go for some other higher dimension, maybe four dimensions or five dimension and so on, okay? So sometimes you may be successful in the immediate higher dimension. So after the transformation to the higher dimensional space, the classes are now linearly separable in the higher dimensional space. So what is the meaning is, we can now fit a hyperplane to separate the two classes from each other in the higher dimensional space you have transformed so that you can perform the prediction easily. That is called as nonlinear SVM. So now let us see what is SVM kernel. Kernels are nothing but, just now I told you, if your data points are not separable in the original dimension, you will be converting into higher dimension, then you will be solving it. That is called as SVM kernel. So the nonlinear SVM is implemented only by means of SVM kernel. So what are SVM kernels? SVM kernels are nothing but they are simply mathematical functions. And these functions can take as input the data, which is nothing but our original data set. And then they will transform that data set into the required format. And these functions can be of different types. And we can use these functions to solve the nonlinear problem of our SVM. And in this, the kernels help us to deal with high dimensional data in an efficient manner. The main reason for going for kernel is when we are converting from lower dimension to higher dimension, we need to deal with the data in an efficient way so that our time complexity is reduced. That is done by the kernels. So we can say that kernels are a way to solve nonlinear problems with the help of linear classifiers. And in this, we have a method known as kernel check method. So now uh, let us understand how we can convert from uh, lower dimension to higher dimension so that we can separate the classes then only you will be able to understand the basic behind the kernel. Now let us see this one. This is a data set with one dimension. That is nothing but I have only a value. Like here the value is, I can say it is minus 0.5, uh, minus one, and this is minus two. This is minus three, minus four and so on. And this side I have plus one, plus two and so on. So here it is not a two deep point. It is one value, single value only. Okay, so this is a one dimensional plane. So I'm writing X1 as one dimensional value. And here, if you consider there are two different classes, one class is represented by the orange circle and the other class is represented by blue color square. In this, I cannot draw a straight line separating these two classes. But our aim is in SVM, we need to draw a plane separating the two classes. In this case, it is not possible. So what I can do now, I can convert from the lower dimension into higher dimension. Here, the dimension is one. So I'll be converting from the dimension one to two, D, two dimension, the next higher dimension. So how I can do that? For that, I need to apply some mathematical function, which is nothing but the kernel, okay? So here, in one dimension, the original data is not linearly separable. So we are going to apply a mathematical transformation. So let me assume that the transformation is written as pi of x, that is represented as x squared. This is a mathematical function you are going to apply. When you do that, you consider the first point, this one, it is here my, uh, plus five. So it will be converted into minus uh, five squared. That is nothing but 25, okay? So you can see here, you are going to convert this point from one dimension to two dimension. So what is your first dimension? It is X1. 
what is your second dimension that is determined by this formula it is x squared so now we are plotting this as a 2d point in the previous case it is not a 2d now we are con converting into 2d so this point is now plotted as in the original dimension the value is 5 now you are applying the second dimension as x squared so 5 squared is 25 so plot the point as 5 comma 25 so this point is now plotted in the x axis as 5 in the y axis as 25 so this is the first point now let me consider this particular point in the original dimension the value is minus 3 so i am going to find the second dimension by applying minus 3 the whole square it is 9 so i am going to plot this point as in the x axis minus 3 in the y axis 9 so you can see here the point is plotted like this and consider this point this point in the original dimension we can say it is uh, around plus 0.5 okay now you square it you will get a uh, 0.25 something so in the x axis now we are going to consider uh, this 0.5 and in the y axis it is around 0.25 okay so it is appearing close to zero because we have converted from one dimension to two dimension that is higher dimension in this dimension after you convert all the points you can clearly see that you can draw a line at this particular point so that it is going to differentiate the two classes from each other so this is how when you convert the points from lower dimension to higher dimension sometimes you may be able to separate them by means of a straight line here it is achieved now which is our kernel function if you see this is our kernel function which is nothing but the mathematical function pi of x is equal to x squared. This is called as SVM kernel. Now, another question comes. For this particular problem, is it that we will have always only one equation? It's not like that. For a particular problem, you can write as many kernels uh, as possible. This is one of the possible SVM kernel. You can have any number of kernels. This is one possible kernel. Now, let us see one more under example to understand. You can consider this. This is nothing but similar to the previous case, only I have the points. Okay, all are in the one dimension. Here also, all the points are in the one dimension. Okay, in this case, you see the previous case, some of the points are negative and some points are positive. Okay, so we have applied x squared and we have uh, separated into two different classes. But you consider here, all the points are in the positive plane only. Okay, so now we can choose the function as x mod 2 to separate the two classes according to these points so for example if you, if i assume that this blue color point is 0 0 mod 2 will be 0 so the point will be here and assume that this one is related to one okay one mod 2 will be mod 2 is nothing but divide the value by 2 and take the remainder one mod 2 if i divide and take the remainder that will be one so this orange point will be now transferred to one and next to blue point the value is around some 2 Okay, so 2 mod 2 will be 0. So the blue point is now drawn in 2, that is 0. And the next point is uh, if it is 3, 3 mod 2 will be 1. So the point will be plotted here. So in this case, by applying x mod 2, we have separated the points into two different uh, uh, classes, which can be separated from each other by means of a straight line. So now, here again, the thing is, from the one dimensional plane, we have converted the points into two dimensional plane. What is the second dimension? That is x2, which is determined by the equation x mod 2. So, this is how we can apply the SVM kernel. And uh, 